3. The City of Gilgamesh Temple Rule Between approximately 4000 and 3000 BCE Uruk The outer wall shines in the sun like brightest copper. The inner wall is beyond the imagining of kings. Study the brickwork, study the fortification. Climb the great ancient staircase to the terrace, study how it is made. From the terrace, see the planted and fallow fields, the ponds and orchards. One league is the inner city, another league is orchards, still another the fields beyond. Over there is the precinct of the temple. Three leagues and the temple precinct of Ishtar measure Uruk, the city of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, legendary ruler of Uruk, famous drinker, womanizer, and battler against monsters, was a King Arthur of Mesopotamian antiquity who set out on a quest for the Holy Grail of Immortality. He may well have been based on a historic figure. Excavators have found inscriptions proving that other kings previously thought purely mythical, like Enmer Baragesi of the city of Kish, did once tread the earth. According to the epic, when Gilgamesh died, the citizens diverted the course of the Euphrates and buried him in the riverbed before letting the waters flow over the spot again. The same tall tale that has been told about many others since, from the prophet Daniel to Attila the Hun, Alaric the Goth, and Genghis Khan. In 2003, a team of German archaeologists, who had conducted a magnetic survey of the location, reported that, in the middle of the former Euphrates River, we detected the remains of a building which may be interpreted as a burial. I begin with Gilgamesh, because his is probably the only Sumerian name at all familiar today. A remarkable consequence of the rediscovery of his story in clay tablets, excavated in 1853 from the ruins of Assyrian king Ashurbanipal's library at Nineveh. These were late copies of a text first compiled by a scribal scholar called Sin Leki Unini in around 1200 BCE, working with materials dating back another 800 years or so. Yet if Gilgamesh really did live and rule Uruk, his reign would have been sometime around 2600 BCE, and even this date followed centuries after his city had risen, flourished, and then declined as the cultural powerhouse of the Sumerian world, and the originator of what might be called temple rule. Towards the end of the fourth millennium BCE, at about the time that writing was being invented, but before it is able to tell us much, Uruk had already spread over some four hundred hectares, greater in size and population than Periclean Athens or Republican Rome three millennia later. Surveys of the settlement pattern in southern Mesopotamia show that the number of village dwellers in the area declined precipitously, while the urban population increased. Environmental historians guess that the great movement of people from the countryside into the cities was caused by a change of climate, which became drier at this time, making subsistence agriculture harder to sustain. But perhaps they exaggerate the stick and underrate the carrot. There was something about Uruk that the U.S. census began a process that has led, step by step, to the brave new world of today's information age. At the end of the 4th millennium BCE, a simple accounting technique using clay tokens was elaborated in the city of Gilgamesh into a sophisticated, versatile, and flexible writing system, the achievement that marks the moment when true history begins. But for every new beginning, there must be an ending of what came before. A division line is drawn. That was then. This is now.